Do you like ice cream, chocolate, pastry all together in one little package? Today we're making profiteroles or profiteroles. They are the most delicious, super easy treat that will impress your friends, but they're basically foolproof and you can use any ice cream you'd like inside. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. These profiteroles will be ready before you know it. So let's get started. First off, get everything together. This shoe is gonna come together really, really quickly and you don't wanna be searching around your kitchen. So, get your baking sheet, line it with parchment paper, have a spatula, have a wooden spoon, have your water, your flour, your eggs, your butter, your salt, your sugar, all out, measured and ready. You don't wanna be like, oh, where is that? Where is that? This thing's boiling or going, no, no, no. Just get it all out. After you have everything ready, you're gonna pop it into a medium-sized pot. So that's one cup or 240 milliliters of regular old water, one and a half teaspoons of sugar, just a little bit, half a teaspoon of salt, in you go, and then eight tablespoons or 113 grams of unsalted butter. If you only have salted butter hanging around, just skip the salt, use salted butter. Recipes call for unsalted butter because different manufacturers add various amounts of salt to their butter, so the best way to standardize the flavor is to use unsalted butter and add the salt in separately, if you ever wondered. Okay, eight tablespoons, oof, in you go. We're gonna take this pot and put it over a medium high heat and bring it to a rolling boil. Have your flour handy because we're gonna dump that in pretty quickly, okay? Let's go. So this is gonna go much faster if you use room temperature butter. I've learned this the hard way. Don't take it out of the fridge. That butter will start melting. It'll come to a boil quicker if it is not ice cold. You can move it around a little bit, but basically it's gonna do its own thing until it comes to a rolling boil. We're filming that, but while that's happening, we're gonna take our stand mixer out, have a paddle attachment ready, and be ready for the next step. Okay, so it's coming to a boil. It's almost there. I want a real rolling boil, and there is still a tiny bit of butter left here. So feel free to take a peek through the foam if you want. That American style butter really foams up. Once it comes to rolling boil, we're gonna dump the flour in off heat. Okay, this is a rolling, rolling boil. So I'm taking it off heat before it boils over. And I'm gonna dump the flour in right now. And stir, 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 stir. This is the part where you have to like really get at it. You're gonna stir for like 30 to 60 seconds until it comes together in a big ball. Well, it won't come together, but you're gonna see that it's like thoroughly mixed. And you can see how the flour is pulling away from the pot right now. Stir, 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 stir. That's what you wanna see. Okay, so turn that heat back on and just cook it for 30 seconds. You're cooking the flour a bit right now and this is where the magic happens. That was 30 seconds, I'm taking it off the heat right now. It's okay to let this hang out for a second and cool down a bit. You don't have to pour it right in. I had a lot of comments in my Eclair video about dumping the shoe in, adding the eggs right away. They're like, aren't you gonna scramble the eggs? I've never had that problem, but I suppose a best practice would be to transfer the flour mixture into your mixer and it can just like hang out for a minute. It's fine. All the stuff that you're doing at the stove is really time sensitive. At this point, we're not in so much of a rush anymore, so it's okay. <laughs> this can get put away. Okay, okay, so here's the deal. You're gonna add your eggs in one at a time, and I have three eggs here. You may need to add one additional egg or like half of an egg extra if the following doesn't happen. After the third egg is in, you should have a smooth, silky batter that is clinging to either your paddle attachment or your little mixing things if you're using a hand mixer, um, but it's like falling off gently. Now, turn it on low, just let it mix up a bit. It'll kind of like spread the heat out. That's fine, it's cool enough. Now add that first egg in. It changes consistency instantly, it's amazing. Second egg. And one thing I do wanna point out is that all the unmixed nonsense at the bottom. So yes, you do wanna scrape your bowl down. All these things require really homogenous mixtures, so you can't have like part with no eggs, part that's too eggy, it has to be all the same. Now we can continue along our process. Last egg in, let's see if that's enough. That's not enough. 
Have you noticed like at the market, sometimes they'll say extra large eggs or large eggs, but they're little tiny baby quail eggs. What's the deal with that? You cannot trust the labeling on them. So yes, you may need to add some more eggs in. So this is close. It's kind of silky. It's kind of drooping off, but it's not close enough. So one egg in, I'm gonna give it just a quick mix. Now I'm gonna add in half of an egg. Let's see how it goes. I don't wanna go overboard because there's like a fine line between being perfect and being like, uh, adding in the whole egg. So it's four eggs in all. There we go. Look at that, that's amazing. <laughs> I want you to see this. So here we have, it's clinging to the paddle slowly falling off, it's nice and silky, and that's what you want, that's perfect. It's so funny because I rarely have to use that fourth egg, but today I did, you always have to have it ready. <laughs> Cracked myself up. Okay, so we're gonna take this off and transfer it into a piping bag. You can use a large round tip, you could use an 869, which is a large open star tip. Don't snip the tip off the piping bag if you don't have to, because you want them to be kind of like a nice round blob shape. We're gonna fix any imperfections, but better with the piping back. Okay, take this out. My lined baking sheet is ready and I have a big tip. <laughs> what is that called? <laughs> it's an 809 tip. You could use a 1A. Any kind of larger round tip will work. Here's the deal. Transfer this in here. Shoe is one of my favorite things to make. It is so versatile because you can use it to make eclairs, Profitrol, cream puffs, whatever you want. You can even make cheese puffs with them. I have an amazing recipe. I should make a video for it of like savory cheese puffs. They're filled with this goat cheese herb mixture that's amazing. The next time I have a party maybe. <laughs> that's all in there. At the ready, you're also gonna have your clean hands, a little bit of water, and then we're gonna make a quick egg wash too. You wanna pipe little balls of dough, maybe like a bit over an inch, inch and a quarter wide, an inch high-ish. And if they're not perfect, don't worry about it. We're just gonna move along. Okay, first one. And you don't wanna crowd these out, give them some space because they will puff up. You want the air to circulate around them as well. And they do not have to look perfect. Remember, these are gonna be covered in chocolate. It's gonna be delicious and no one's gonna notice the exact shape. These shells are great too because you can also freeze them for later if you wanna do different fillings with them or just have some at the ready to use. That's good for round one. Now our clean fingers. So clean fingers, dip them in the water and you're just gonna tamp these little spikes down. Those would singe in the oven and you do not wanna have any burnt shoe. You can re-wet your finger as needed. Once those are ready, we're gonna brush on just a little bit of egg. It'll give it an extra golden color, but it's optional. You do not have to do that if you want. So just gently brush the top. These are gonna go into the oven at 425 for about 20 minutes until they're puffed and golden. Keep an eye on them. If you see them getting golden a bit early, you can pull them out. Do not let them burn. My profiteroles to be have been baking for about 20 minutes at 425 and you can see they're nice and golden. This is the color that we want. However, they're not ready yet because we need to poke a couple holes in here with the sharp end of a stick. This will let the steam escape. And what would happen if you didn't poke the holes in is there's still a lot of moisture in here. And after baking, even though they look perfect now, that steam would soften the whole thing and they wouldn't be nice and crispy. They'd be kind of like doughy and just bleh, like there's no point to them. So we're gonna poke some holes on the top and then put them back in the oven at like 300 degrees for like four minutes or so. Uh, just enough to dry them out. And then you can crack the door open and uh, have the oven off and just let them hang out there for a few minutes. You don't want them to like cook more, just dry out. It's fairly important. Okay, holes have been poked back into the oven. My profiteroles are out of the oven and can I just show you how amazing they turned out? I love like the crackled appearance of them. Listen to this. Hard, crispy, crunchy, delicious. You don't want them to get too soft, although don't tell anyone else, but I actually love the soft ones. They're like so like melt in your mouth. But that's for something else. This is for ice cream. Um, these are ready to have their little filling inserted, but first, we're gonna make a delicious and super easy chocolate ganache for this. 
which I just so happen to have here. So I'm using four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate and half a cup or 120 ml of like a, a cream. You can use milk if you wanted though too. If you don't have like a chocolate bar handy, go ahead and use chocolate chips, whatever. They work too. You could use white chocolate, semi-sweet, bittersweet, like extra dark, it's totally up to you. Give it a rough chop. I think the easiest way to make a ganache is to scald the cream in the microwave. You could do it on a sauce pot, but meh, I have so many dishes already. Just pop it into the bowl, put it in the microwave for like 40 seconds and give it a test. People's microwaves are different. You want it to be almost boiling, like really warm, but not boiling. I'm gonna grab that cream out of the microwave. It needed 20 more seconds, it'd been a while. All right, let's move this aside. Okay, let's transfer that chocolate into our cream without making a mess. I'm just gonna stir it in. And usually I let the chocolate sit there for like a minute or two. It'll warm up with the cream. If you'd like, you could add a teaspoon of instant espresso or coffee. You could add a tablespoon of coffee, sub that in for the cream, or you could leave it plain. I think the kids might be enjoying these, so I don't wanna put any coffee in there. You wouldn't really taste it, but I don't want any caffeine in their system. Not now, <laughs> it's too much. Someone in the comments told me that in France, if you used a whisk to make ganache, they would cut your hand. And he's like, I'm not kidding, they would cut your hand. Using a spoon today. <laughs> Just one more thing about the ganache. So at first, when you make it, it'll be really soupy and you're like, oh, I need to add more chocolate to it. But as it cools down, it will really congeal. So just give it some time, you could chill it or you could use less liquid in the first place. It's really up to you. This is coming together nicely, very silky. I'm gonna set it aside. If I notice any lumps in a minute or two, I'll just microwave it for 30 seconds, give another stir, it'll be perfect. You can fill your profiterole with anything you'd like. I'll be using ice cream. I'm actually gonna serve these tomorrow. They're just gonna live in the oven where it's nice and dry overnight, but I'm gonna make one for you. So to do that, just cut it in half. On the inside, it's still nice and soft. It will melt in your mouth, but the outside is crisp and delicious. So grab a scoop of ice cream, then plop it right in there. Cap it off, and it's time to add the ganache. Spoon some of the ganache on top. Just let it drizzle over. And if you want, you can pop this right back into the freezer to firm up, or you can enjoy it like this. It'll be messy, but delicious, especially if you have sensitive teeth. So full disclosure, I might need to check my freezer temperature. It is a little bit melty over here. I'm gonna eat this right now. But before I do, if you like this recipe, check out my chocolate eclairs. So delicious, like a mega version of this filled with pastry cream. You're gonna love it. Oh my gosh, the crispy shoe pastry, the melty chocolate, the amazing ice cream, this all comes together in a wonderful package and it's delicious. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.